Hi guys, it's Claris. Welcome to another tutorial. Today we are going to do a tutorial on how to paint feathers. So these are the kind of feathers we're going to be painting. I'll teach you how to do something simple and basic like this and then we'll get into something with a little more detail and then something like this right here. Also there's the whole shadowy ghosting effect so we might try a couple of different things here. All right, so for brushes, I'm using my number four silver black velvet, using my number eight Princeton Neptune, and I'll be using my mop brush in D1. For colors, we're going to be using a mixture of um, St. Petersburg, the Azure, and also Daniel Smith's, um, I believe it's the Flato Blue. Um, and I'm just trying to get the whole um, turquoise sort of look and feel. Um, so azure, Play-Doh blue. We're also using, for the brown that I have going on here, we're using the Mars brown from um, St. Petersburg again. And then quinacridone rose, which is like a pink, along with the violet from um, St. Petersburg. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, first things first, I'm going to do the center. Um, oh, one more thing. <clears throat> this sheet right here, it's been a while, but I'm going to be using, this is the, this is the um, um, Arches Hot Press. Yes, so it's like smooth. I believe it is the Hot Press. Let me just double check again. I always get them mixed up for some reason. Yep, Hot Pressed Arches. So stepping it up a notch just for this tutorial. Um, yes, yeah, so we're going to start off with doing the centers. For this first one, we're going to use the Azure Blue. So I'm mixing it straight out of my pan right here using my number four. And I want it to be fairly dark for the center. So first one that we're going to do is right. Let's just go right for the center. And... I'm going to thicken it as we go lower here, spreading the color down to the bottom, giving it some shape. And then once I have this, I'm taking my mop brush. I'm going to go and get some of the um, Flato Blue that I have mixed up already. And I'm going to do my first few strokes, which are going to be first this way to the center and another one this way, another one here, another one this way. And I'm touching and bringing it down to the center here every time I do these strokes. And as we go lower, you'll see there's more water. So there's more of a um, blend. I just got some more blue from there. And here we go. So I want this area to be fairly damp. So I'm gonna go back in and add more water and I'm pushing all the color down, adding some more water to the top because I need this to be damp as I'm doing the next few steps. If you wanna add or leave in some uh, white space, absolutely do that. I'm gonna go back in, get some Azure, add it to the bottom. And then as I'm adding it to the bottom, I'm also gonna add it to the center. Make sure you get enough water on your brush to add it to the center. And it kind of gives you that nice blend as you go up. So at the top, you can either choose to leave it as is, or you can add another color to kind of make it like a two-tone. I'm adding more of the Azure Blue to the bottom. I'm going to add some to the top as well, just to kind of give it a nicer top and bottom kind of feel. And then comes the fun part. This is where we kind of let it blend. But actually, before we let it blend, I'm going to go in and take some of the quinacridone rose. Time is of the essence here, guys. I'm going to add a little bit of yellow, uh, pink in areas where it is still damp because I want it to have that blend of color. All right, and then once I have that happening, can just swish it around in certain areas. Then we're going back to this brush and then we're doing our little 
details at the end. And notice I am going from the inside out and give it give it movement, give it detail. Just keep going with the detail. Make sure the tip of your brush is nice and pointed. And if it needs some blending, just kind of don't feel shy to kind of just go in and add that little blend. Now, if you feel you want more of the blue in there too, absolutely go in with your blue, add it sporadically as in where you can see it's needed. Enhance this to the best of your capabilities. I'm gonna go back in, I've washed off most of this and I'm gonna use just the brush with water to add detail to the edges. Now this is why it's integral that this, um, that these areas still be damp because now once we go in, if it's not damp, um, you kind of lose out on the whole being able to create these strokes that look like they blend in uh, and they're kind of part of the feathery parts that are broken in between. Uh, but not to fear because if that is the case we can always dampen it ever so slightly again and kind of still get that effect but it's nicer if you can just do it from the start and you're not overworking the whole thing so for instance I'm just gonna go take in some of the blue or actually just using my my brush here I can just take some of the blue and just add more Of a nice wash to it and then once I have that I'm gonna go back in and just add some detail give it flair give it movement have fun with this as you're kind of doing it give it character um, you can actually kind of get lost in just doing all this detail with the feathers because you're such pretty abstract sort of things to do um, but yeah don't overwork it too much at some point you have to just kind of let it go so I'm just giving it a little bit of and I'm gonna let it go soon and I'm just gonna leave it at this right now I'm gonna let this dry what you can also do at this stage is just using Washing off all the water color from your brush, just kind of go in, sorry, washing off the color, leaving a little bit of water, you can go in and just add some detail, like adding lines, water lines, and it's like adding a little bit of detail to your little feather, and you're just pushing the color down. It'll be darker in some areas, lighter in some other areas. You're just adding some nice detail to it and in a very faint manner. This would also happen where you get some of the darker blue and you're kind of adding it around and it's nice so I would leave it. So that's that. Uh, then we can move on to one more generic looking um, feather again I for this one I will use the brown which is the Mars brown I believe so I'm getting the number four I'm gonna use uh, the Mars brown and create a shape this way and let's use this end to be the the bottom All right, and then I'm gonna go and get my mop brush. And for this, for this one, well, let's use the let's use the quinacridone rose with mixed in with the um, with some of the violet. And I'm getting a lot water on it, a lot more water on it because I want it to be damp. I'm just gonna do one stroke and then two. 
and then just touching the, the top, pushing the color down at the bottom. I love this, it's like super light, quick. And then just gonna take in my Princeton. You can either get in some of the quinacridone mixed with the purple or just the purple itself and just add a little more detail to the ends. just like we did previously, or you could just leave it as is if you like how it looks. No pressure. Now what can also happen is you can kind of start off at the top and just kind of do sporadic little color bobs. So it looks like it's a polka dot at the top and then just kind of taper off to the bottom. And then leave it at that. And then again, we're going back in with our number four and we are going to add the detail at the bottom. Um, there's a lot of water pooling there already, so I just don't wanna, using just the tip of my, my brush here, I'm gonna add some detail. Add some at the top here too. Nothing too crazy. Just simplifying that bit because I felt like it got a little bit too detailed. Adding some on this side as well. Just use your paper towel to wipe off any excess water that might be there on your brush. And give it some nice direction. And that's beautiful. All right, so we'll leave this one as is, not a lot of detail. This one's got a little more detail. And then we'll move on to one more. Um, let's use a combination of the blue, the Zor blue and the Mars brown to create this center. And let's do it over here. Adding the stumpy end on this side this time. I'll put that down, get my brush, and this time I will get, um, let's see what color can we get. Let's get a, let's get some of the, let's get some of the purple, more of the purple than the Actually, no, more of the quinacridone rose than the purple, so it's more of a pinky color. And my first stroke will be over here. My second stroke, I've just added more color to it. Pushing it down giving it a little bit more shape, like an organic looking shape, and then pushing it, pushing the color back up. All right, and now once I've done that, I'm gonna go back in with my little brush and I'm gonna add more of the black detail to the bottom. And in fact, just maybe like enhance it so it looks like there's more of like a black fade at the bottom. Um, and I'm just gonna do the quick little bottom fur 
feather outer detail. Make sure you can see all of this as I'm kind of going along. I'm going to give it more detail in the center to kind of avail of the fact that it's still pretty damp and I can get some detail there. And then uh, I'm just going to add some linear lines to this with the dark color that I have. So kind of adding my own little detail to the top. Now this might not be realistic, but I love the additional texture and detail that it adds to a plain flat lay of color. So I'm kind of going with it. And now I've just washed off the color and I'm just using water to create some of these lines. All right, and then finally, we're gonna just do it the other way around. I'm using some of the yellow this time to just kind of add it in between here and there. nothing crazy and then again using this to add more fine detail So you just have to kind of look around and see where you can <clears throat> avail of areas that are still damp and kind of get a nice enough blend of color and make, make everything look a lot more fun and frolicky. And I'm just mixing some of that yellow here so it like blends in nicer and there we go we have our three fun feathers so to achieve this effect here you kind of just use you use you're using the exact same technique except instead of really going into each of the feathers and kind of manning the details. You're just kind of uh, sticking with um, with just the shadow, really. So uh, one more thing before I wrap up. We just want to make sure that the centers are more intense and intensified. So I just want to make sure this is not damp anymore. So now that all of it is dried, just go back in and intensify your centers. So give them a darker, more prominent color. And then once that side's done, you can move on to the next side. Uh, just wanna make sure it's not too Adding some of the brown for this one. There we go. And then we had a mixture of the brown and the azure for this one here. But I think this is still damp a little bit. And we're just going to go down. And then leave that at that. 
Now, one last thing that you can do in detail that you could add is adding little touches of color or even splatters. So for this, I would use splatters of either like the yellow or the blue. Yeah, one of the two because you want to pick on the color, actually not the not the blue, the purple. So I'm just going to use Let's try both actually, why not? Because I actually have color of the yellow. So I'm using my number four, sorry, my number eight Princeton. And I'm just going to go and add a little bit here and there. So I've added some of the yellow. Now let's add some of the blue. Um, sorry, not the blue, the purple. So I'm mixing some purple. It's got a lot of water on it, so I just want to make sure I don't get too much happening. So I'm going to try and be light about this. Let's see how it works. So there's some purple and it's like nice and dark. I'm going to put some at the bottom. But I don't want too much. Put some on the side here. I should probably not do this while I'm wearing pink pants or shorts rather. There we go. Okay, loving it. I'm gonna leave it at this. Um, to end off, you can actually do one more thing and that is add some silver detail using some silver ink or even gold if you have something like that. But otherwise, these are, this is how you do, or this is my version of some fun and light feathers. Hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial. Thanks so much guys for watching. If you feel this was useful, please do share it in your social media circles. It helps really get the word out there about me and my tutorials and then kind of also boost the channel. And then I can continue creating these lovely, fun tutorials for you guys. Thanks so much for watching. Please do send me your artwork, like pictures if you can, through direct messaging on Instagram and Facebook. I love hearing from you guys. So... Yeah, thanks guys, and we'll chat soon. Bye.